In addition of vectors, uh, I want us to consider two vectors. Consider two vectors, say, uh, vector AB, written that way with an arrow showing direction that we are moving from A towards B, and vector C, BC, and vector BC. So I want us to consider these two vectors AB and vector BC. Now, giving these two vectors any length, we would write them as a vector connotations this way. Say that is vector AB. I'm using the arrow to show it is from A towards B, just like it is in our AB here. This arrow shows that we are talking of A to B. And another vector, say vector BC. So BC, we can write it that way. Now, the arrow would point to where C is, so we can say that is C, and then this is B. Now, uh, let me just rub here so that we can get it clearly from this point. Now, using these two vectors, AB, AB written here, and BC, we can join them and join the two parts B and B in each instance. So taking AB, that was the direction, we can join BC to it. Now BC can be drawn as one. The direction here was from B to C. So we'll still show that direction that way up to a point C. Now from this, we can join A to C so that we have a triangle that way. Now, remember our A to C is not yet a vector quantity because it doesn't have direction. So, looking at this, it is possible that we can get vector A to C. Now, when we say vector A to C, it means that direction is from A to C. Now, to get vector A to C, we may not simply say A to C because A to C is not yet a vector. And what can make us have vector quantity of AC is actually adding the various vector quantities that lead from A to C. Now, for instance, in this case, for us to get A to C, we can move from A to B vector, like it is shown here, from A to B. And then at B, we can again move towards C, so that we'll cover A to C. So we'll talk of B to C. So in this instance, you can see clearly, like we said in the first lesson, that a vector quantity has direction. Whatever we have between A and C here, is a scalar quantity, a scalar quantity, because we don't have a direction. But we know the direction of A to B, which we can get, and we also know the direction of B to C. Now, using these two directions, we can add them to get vector AC. I want us to look, take a very simple explanation. Say you are at point X. And somebody requires you to move to a town, say, town Z. You know that you're supposed to move to X to town Z. But you don't know the way. So it means you don't have direction. So what will happen is that you will use another stopover, a town that you know well, from which you can access Z. Now suppose that you are at X and you are going to town Z, but you know another town W and you know you are away from X to W 
And if at W, you'll still know your way from X to Z, then you may decide not to go straight from X to Z because you don't know that town. And instead, you may pass through W from which you can easily access Z that way. So in this instance, this can show us two vectors where you can move from X to W and then another vector from W to Z, such situation. So you shall have avoided a route you don't know between X and Z and have got through a route you already know. Now, these represent the vector quantities we are already talking of here. Now, learners, having this, I want you to know that the distance from A to C now ceases being just a distance. Instead, it is now called displacement. Thank <music> you.